car. So by the end of today, the goal would be to have it mostly stripped down. Engine trans out, coolers out, interior apart. We're slowly undressing this. What's up guys, welcome back. Let's get back on the race car. Been a couple, maybe about a week, a little over a week, went to PRI, back, been doing some stuff. But I got some new doors that came in. So I have a couple different companies that made me molds. This one in particular is called Group A, they're in California. The other one that has molds for like my body kits, another company in California, cause like, they're busy and one guy couldn't do it all. So you guys know I wrecked that door at the Riverside Drift event. So I needed a new passenger door. So this is it. Let's, they're pretty flexy. I do have to trim all the holes like right here for the door handle. You gotta punch out everything where the hinges go and the little stopper that keeps the door from swinging wide open and where your latch goes. So. A lot of Kevlar and carbon fiber dust, which is horrible. I don't feel like doing that today, so I'm not gonna do that today. Oh, and I don't run this, I cut this off. It takes a long time, so just to mount doors. So my thought was, I just wanna show you guys that, it's pretty cool. And the box is so big, cause I ordered two more. So I got a full pair of doors, so now I have an extra pair of doors. If needed, my driver door was fine on the car. Now I got a new passenger, so I don't know if something happens during the year and I don't want to have a blown hole in the door, which shouldn't happen, but you never know with drifting. Then I could send myself a door wherever I'm at. What I was thinking I should do today is disconnect some of the fuel lines that are still in our way and the steering column, drop the front subframe. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to do something with brake calipers. Drop the front subframe, then I could get it ready to clean up and if I'm gonna work on the rack and whatever else, like it'd be easier if it's out of the car. Clean it up real nice to go back in and see how far I get with that and possibly do the rear as well. Then kind of work my way back from there. Well, I guess I still need to take the, probably take the whole car outside and clean that. It's been really cold, so I wasn't wanting to work on it and do this, but gotta do it soon. Running out of time, guys. Yeah, there's a bunch of little things that we need to do, but overall, there's not a whole lot of stuff I need to replace that wasn't worn out. I just need to look at some of this stuff, but for sure I want the subframes out so I can have a better look, see if something's tweaked or something. I don't think it is. Car was driving very good, but just good to get it out, get your eyes on it. Probably gonna put a fresh steering rack. That's like a used rack that's rebuilt. Works great, but I just like to replace things before you go into the new year so you don't get surprises. So I'll probably just replace it with another rebuilt one or possibly a brand new one. I did get a new one from Toyota that's in the trailer. Maybe I should just run it, but okay. Let's get started guys. subframes out while I was kind of in here taking stuff apart started messing with the steering column decided to put a new joint on it because the other one was pretty uh, weathered from multiple years so I had a new joint and then the next part of the column that goes down to the rack I found a way to adapt it to more of a stock style uh, super one instead of this is the old one and the old u-joint 
See how it's kind of weathered? And before I had welded, or I kind of like drilled a hole through it and rosette welded this column piece that's, you know, just like a three quarter inch chrome piece for like a hot rod. It's worked for many years, I still could use that. Was always kind of having trouble with is getting it in and out easily. And I guess you're not taking them in and out too frequently, but this is a stock one. And I had to trim the top off of it. Um, and then see how it's retractable. So it's telescoping as well as that shaft. And then this has a finer spline count than what I had before. So I feel like between this spline count, this one, and the one on the uh, Woodward, you could kind of dial in your center of your steering wheel a little easier. Cause sometimes you'll do rack center and it's off. Even though you did rack center and everything's good, you'll be off by a little bit on your steering wheel. It's kind of frustrating. So I did that. So that's kind of an improvement. Also, if you guys can see in here, yeah, you can kind of see this rubber boot makes contact. It's like really close, but the rubber makes contact. So pretty much every year I replace that rubber boot because either like severs it or gets pretty close to it, puts a wear mark in it every year because steering column spinning back and forth oh, right next to the, the brake pedal. It doesn't interfere, like make anything drive weird. So I fixed that. Then kind of thought about it and I have a brake kit that I developed with um, my machine guy that build all our built parts and we just haven't used it yet. I don't know why it's taking so long. I think I'm gonna try and put it on this off season. The unsprung weight will be reduced cause see these are pretty big rotors for a drift car. That's more of like a road race style setup. That's just what I've been using, more weight. So if I could reduce like seven pounds total, might as well do it. So we'll get those set up and get them on there. And in the meantime, when this is out, we'll get it all cleaned up. It's making me want to, cause this, I know this is like stained. It's like I pressure washed it at one point. It's never going to look perfect unless I sandblast it, but it's making me want to sandblast that and then clear coat it. Not sure if I should do that, but maybe I will. You guys can see I have this strap down here. I didn't even try and see if it will balance. I just assume it's not going to. So that's like that until I pulled the rear subframe out, then it probably would balance fine just with the chassis of the car but right now it's definitely rear heavy and it probably would have leaned back thinking i'm gonna pull this out i haven't fully decided yet but i think i'm gonna yank this out right now so i'm gonna get to work on that see how far i get guys that one it's gonna need a lot of work once i get that off it's gonna make me want to make new brake lines and everything and yeah it's fun to take the car apart, but then it's just like this rabbit hole of things you gotta spend money on and you're like, it was working, why did I take it apart? But it'll make it easier for us at the racetrack and I don't know, it'll work even better than it was. So let me get to that. If you guys don't have a forklift, you're doing it wrong because forklifts make your life easy. Rear subframe's out. The car's just filthy, so kind of want to make a little table for it to roll around on and clean it and everything, but it's like so cold during the day right now, it's not going to be fun because I'm going to get very wet, I feel like, when I'm cleaning this, but yeah, that's the plan. Let me light this up for a second. This area here where that rectangular hole is right here, I kind of want to patch that in with like a piece of aluminum or something. See how there's holes here? Maybe I could just bolt it in there. Got to hammer that flat. You guys can see this expanding foam and it, it stops rocks and rubber from getting in there, but I need to find a way to block it better. I should have blocked it better in the past. It's really messy. This side's even hammered out more because like when you bump wheel to wheel or just in front of the wheel, it always, it's real flimsy right there and it bends. Then I got a lot of fab work to fix that. I have an idea of what to do there, but underneath here, not sure if I'm gonna do new fuel lines or not. I need to see what the new FCST from Radium is gonna look like. If my lines will make it, 
or if I need to adjust them, I'll build new ones. Not the end of the world. Um, those are pretty old, like five years old, four years old, so it could use a refresh on those. Over here, I'm looking through at stuff like maybe this that I would replace, but I'm not sure yet until I put the new, if that will work uh, when I put the new brakes on. So I'm gonna do the new brakes and kind of go back through it. In here, I probably still need to strip out a couple more things so I can clean better and maybe hit it with paint again. I also need to fix this side rocker because it's just getting increasingly hard to attach the side skirt because it keeps moving this, like look here how it moves it inward where it originally started out out here and now it's kind of like folded this under itself and pushing this, this little like tray area up and then it like makes contact with the door when the door closes. So I need to fix some of that. I know it's gonna happen again, so I'm not gonna fix it too crazy. It's just inevitable with drift cars, the rockers get poked in with tires and stuff from other people driving next to you. And if we come over here, subframe just looks dirty for what I can see. It looks good, no stress fractures or anything. I really doubt it. It's pretty much just way heavy duty overkill on the Supra subframe and then this structure I did isn't gonna, usually they work for many years. So I think I'm gonna kind of just take it all apart, um, check everything. I have some new upper control arms, see how they're mismatched. This is like a battle version upper arm. I don't really love this because it's not adjustable while it's on the car. This is an old style battle version arm that he quit making and then I had to like make new ones like that because he didn't want to make those anymore because this piece was a little more expensive. So I replicated that piece for myself, made a bunch of those. I think I have some over here. So I made a bunch of those, but then later found out that I don't want to build tubular arms. It's just more time consuming. See how I made these? Or I didn't make it, but I had um, one of my guys that makes stuff for us make these. We're making billet upper arms that'll have the double adjuster built into it. So it's easy to adjust camber at the track. That's where we do our camber wear, like for tire wear. And then I'm gonna go through all the other things, make sure everything's good to go. And then once it's clean, put it back in. It's just a lot of cleaning. And kind of as you go through, you're gonna find stuff that you're like, ah, this needs repair. So time consuming but it's fun at the same time. When you know you have a deadline, you're like, you wanna make sure you get everything figured out now so you can order what you need so that you're gonna hit that deadline in time. I just kinda took some stuff apart. Rear sway bar, we're gonna go through the end links, see that they're still not sloppy. If they're sloppy, replace them. These pillow block things, see if they're good to go again. Clean that back up, ready to go back in. Yeah, if I could make like a little rolling table for this, or if I had a rotisserie, then I could clean it super good outside. Kind of want to buy a rotisserie, but I kind of don't want to spend the money on that right now. All right, that's it until tomorrow, guys. Before I strip this down, I'm gonna pull the axle out. I'm gonna do some measurements so that I can get like a full droop, full squat. I can get the different lengths there from this this face to this face to order some different custom axles. I'm gonna see about getting them from Wisefab. If Wisefab can't do the style that I have, which is like both ends have the Porsche 930 style CVs, and then you have an insert in here, if they don't wanna do it that way or can't, then I'm gonna go to this other company called uh, G-Force Axles and do that. Cause these ones, these are drive shaft shop axles, but they're just ridiculously overpriced for the same exact thing that a couple other companies make, and I don't get why. So expensive, so gonna try something else. Check these out though. This is um, a brake kit that we made, and I should have put it on maybe a year ago, but I didn't. Sold it to a couple customers. Maybe you guys, if you remember when we first were building this on another customer's car, you might have seen it. This could work for a Street Supra um, that wanted a big brake kit or an SC300 or for, you know, drifting. We have this dual rear caliper bracket, so this will be in the rear. It's the right side. This is the right side. This is the right side. So we can put two Willwood calipers on there. These guys here. I'm going to switch over to this. That should save me a tiny bit of weight. It's not a whole lot. I was mentioning this before, but like if you see the size here is a little bit let me line this up it's a little bit thinner 
So that's a little bit lighter weight. This piece is lighter weight than what I currently had. These other brackets are kind of heavy and this piece might be a little bit lighter weight than what's on there. But with that being said, in like a big accident, you're probably gonna bend these. I don't know if you will, but I'm just guessing you might. Um, so I'm gonna go through all this and kind of just try and fit it up, see how I like it. Then I'll probably be taking everything back apart, unfortunately, but that's kind of how it goes when you're trying new parts. These are the hats for the front. Um, so I need to assemble this real quick and then I'll test fit it on there and we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, it's been a couple days. I got super into this and then had to leave. Then I got sick the next day. Been sick for a couple days, but we're back over here. I want to show you guys. So front and rear brake kit is mostly installed with Wisefab. Since this is a custom knuckle that they weld and, you know, it's going to warp when they're welding and then they powder coat it. They're each set of like going off of these ones, each set of knuckles I put on. I have to shim it differently top or bottom to get it to adjust to center the the pads on each side so kind of went through a little bit of that with these they're opposite of those or were different than those but we got them dialed in where they're nice and straight and parallel everything can spin we did that so these are the new front brakes they're a little bit lighter the rear brakes were way lighter it was like nine and a half pounds combined with the calipers, brackets, and rotors and hats that we're saving per corner. Total of like 19 pounds basically. So like if you round it up, you're saving 20 pounds in the rear. It's more, just, just call it 19, but basically because the rotor's thinner, the hat is a little lighter. So a lot of the weight's in the rotor, then there's weight savings in the bracket that we made out of aluminum. And there's weight savings in the caliper because the caliper's smaller. Next thing we're gonna save weight on is these upper arms. So the rear of the car is gonna save some weight. Not something I was like planning. That's not why I did this. I just was trying to get the, the rotating weight to be down on the drive line a little bit. Just a hair, that'll help. I guess you always wanna save weight, but that's not the main reason I did. I just wanted to have, since that kit is not produced anymore and that's been through many years and I just wanted to have like a solution if I was to destroy it or something in an accident. Pretty beautiful parts if you're looking at them. I do have more sets of these, multiple more sets of these. If you guys want to buy some, they'll be on the website shortly. That happened and then I kind of got into the Reinhardt's. Here's last year's set functioning properly, but I need to send them back to Toge Factory in Illinois. They're going to rebuild them. That's who is the main distributor of Reinhardt. Here's a fresh set. I'm gonna use new springs. I'm gonna swap the helpers over from the fronts. I don't run a rear helper. Wait, does that look like it's shorter? It is. Hmm. I'm gonna swap these over. Dang it, that one hit a tire though. I gotta do a little bit more research here. I wanna get these all set up, ready to go back in while these are off getting rebuilt and refreshed and things fixed that need replacing. Also, we were going through the car and making a list of radium things that I'm gonna ask for, for refreshing the car from radium. They're usually really good about sending fresh products, radium, <laughs> to all the people that they support and making sure you're dialed for the following year. There's a couple things like filters, filter housings, and stuff that I haven't replaced in a long time that look pretty beat up and stuff. I'll probably ask for some of that stuff. And then they came out with the new FC ST, the X version for the top of their fuel cells. They're gonna give me one of those. And then a couple other little supporting pieces for the radium stuff that I use. And I was thinking it's time to upgrade to use a radium fuel pressure regulator right here. They've been such a good supporter over all the years. And I've been using a turbo smart one, which has never let me down, but Let's just like put all the fuel system to be radium and what I can run radium. I like to run radium. It's a great product and we sell all their parts on the website. It's a great product. So I want to keep promoting it and have you guys see it on the website and want to grab them for your build. You know, speaking of that, we could offer these on our website too. So if you guys are interested in three way coilovers or two way or single way from Reinhardt for your ride, let us know. Yeah, you guys can tell I'm still sick. Also, I don't think I shared this with you guys. Check this out. 
beautiful new PWR. So basically it's the same as the other one. We had mentioned that, but we wanted this so that the air could be, I mean, it's not sealed as much as I thought it would be. It is right here, but there's like massive like air gaps in a couple areas and this doesn't seal perfectly here. I kind of wish it had a tab, but I can't weld anything on there now. So I might try to just do more of this like that like expanding foam thingy pad that they, I don't know, I have some of that. So um, I'll put some of that there so it'll seal that gap and anywhere else there's a gap so that we can try and achieve less rubber being sucked in because these fans do all the work. You're not gonna get any air flowing through the radiator in a rear mounted car on the roof where like the air coming over the car is just rushing over, doesn't even make it in here which is no big deal because the fans are more than sufficient. But once it starts getting clogged with all the dust from the tires and the track and everything. But the good thing is it's not going to be super convenient to remove this, but I don't really remove this too often. This will go all the way through one day, usually like practice and qualifying. I can do nitrous bottle through. So it's like you might change that once a race day. So it, it's kind of inconvenient, but we got the quick release from nitrous outlet so we can get to those and everything still fits in here with the shroud, which I still have the ability to tilt this back a little bit, but I'd have to make new mounts, which I might. Those are simple enough to make, but I was just really excited that it bolted right in and even they did this like where the mounts were. The only thing that's a little different is they didn't ask me how thick mine were and I guess I would have had to like ask for that detail and I just assumed they would be thicker and come out further. I would have to almost bend these brackets or just make new ones, but I'll just make new ones because these are just those cups and bungs I sell, so I'll just throw together that kit real quick, make some, bend some arms, that, or I'll just tilt it differently when I weld it. But the parts that came in are really cool and the parts that we're upgrading are pretty cool, so I was trying to share that with you guys. Still got a lot of work ahead of myself and I kind of lost like four days of production from being sick, but we still got time. It's a lot of talking, but I just wanted to share all that with you guys. And then I got to pull that radiator out and clean everything up. I just had thrown it in there, but I just thought it'd be cool to show you guys. Uh, still got to add this side. Um, oh, this is an extra set of brackets for the front that I'll bring in the trailer. This is the other rear. The reason I didn't put that rear side on is because I'm going to break that all down anyway and clean that. So it's like, that was just like a fitment thing. And then I'm gonna be running these Project Mew brake pads. These are the D1 Spec Extreme. These are for the handbrake. Work really good. It's a slightly different size than I ran before in my other caliper, so that's why. Yep, just getting to everything. Lots left to go. I need to hurry up. All right, talk to you guys later. We took this all apart, we being Grant. Yeah. I was there, but Grant did the front stuff. And so, it's front and rear. It's... Yeah. We took it all apart. We had a brand new steering rack that had been strapped in the trailer with like rags around it. But the unfortunate thing is it corroded somehow a little bit. I don't know how. Moisture, I guess, got caught in the rags. The reason it was wrapped in rags is to like help it not vibrate against what it was strapped to in the trailer across the country. So it's been in there like two years, actually. It finally was like, let's use that one. Doesn't look so new, but uh, Grant cleaned this all up and then checked everything that was like tight and went through. We had to put like one new outer tie rod was pretty loose. And then we took all the arms off the wall in the trailer and double checked that they're the right lengths left and right so that if there's an accident, you can put them on and you don't have like adjustments and installation, it's just installation. Did that, I did the back and like went through and checked arms and cleaned up stuff as best we could. So the hubs are both off still and the knuckles because I found kind of like a loose bearing on one. So we got the spare one out of the trailer. I just need to put brackets on it, but it was like had a little bit of movement. So it's either the slightest bit bent or it's just the hub is blown. It's so, so close to not being bent, but I think it was just a loose hub. It makes sense, I don't know, like worn out hub. Not very nice to this car. And then we figured a new way to do a vent. So it had just like a little vent breather that would just kind of like be housed in there. Maybe in my opinion, it looks similar to what you'd see on like a boost controller, the atmospheric port. It's like a little screen, but 
What we're gonna do is run it to a, like, cause it wanted to spit out and it was leaking everywhere there every time I drove it. I don't like the way that was because of that. So I'm gonna run a dash four hose up to a little vent so that it can like spit fluid out and then drain itself back in when it's, you're done driving it. But we're on hold with this cause I need the upper control arms to get here that I wanna run. So we're just kind of going through each thing. Right now the trailer, the generator's on, it's running and we're, we're in there like organizing some stuff. Those are spare fuel lab. Uh, pulse width controllers for the PDM pumps that I run, but we needed these special connectors on there to match up to my engine ha or my chassis harness. So I sent extras over to a Hartsock Motorsports, and he's the guy that wired my car. So then we he set us up with two sets of spares. Now, worst case scenario, if one of those fails, you can just plug one in and go from there. So that's pretty good. That's most of the update. We are going to now steal some of the springs off these, clean them up, put them in these, and I also have to steal the rear top hats because see how those are customized for what we're doing, where they take a piece of a Miata one and adapt it to a Super one to get it to have longer travel so it sits up inside the chassis. So we're gonna work on that. Here's the rear brake stuff. That will be installed in the near future here. All right, guys. We're gonna start working on that now. Coil over time. All right, back on the Supra again. So I've taken every last little plate, kind of filled some holes that I had out so I can clean this. I just got to wiping it. I'm gonna decide which sections where I'll repaint. I always have a lot of cans of this like battleship gray color or whatever this is. So I could just spray it here. Yesterday, I did a lot of work on this rear window. Kind of built new mounts for this cause it was like slightly under a bind, I guess. I think I showed you guys that. They were inset a little bit on these bungs that they did compared to the ones I had. So I was gonna have to bend my other mount so i just made new ones just use like those cups and bungs that we sell so these are steel bungs threaded m6 it's an m8 cup and i just connect it with some quarter inch steel then at the bottom it's kind of held in there with the oem rubber bushings from toyota i repositioned how i'm going to mount the water pump to bring it further away it's closer to this steel structure but maybe about half an inch further away from the radiator. I don't know if that's gonna do anything for us. I never had a water pump failure. I just moved it. So this is the rest, final resting place of the new radiator. You guys are probably thinking this is awfully close, but the, I don't know, not tons of room, but I don't technically use a whole ton of nitrous. I use like, a bottle a day so basically we would switch this like two to three times in a weekend not the end of the world to lean up like when this is up to lean in and do it now with having the rear window only cut out here and for the fuel fill i'm going to probably see more heat on this bottle at the beginning of the day you start it up you need to heat your bottle up to get it up to temperature or you just idle the car a lot and let it kind of heat soak in here, then I'm probably gonna be running. I put like a wet towel that's been in an ice chest on there. Probably gonna be running the towel more often when I'm waiting in line. Okay, we're outside. This is the rear window. It's a ton of work. When you get it, it's like a pre-made for a Supra, but I still gotta like trim this edge because it's a little large in a way. So I trim that edge and this edge to shave off like eighth inch on each side, then cut out where I want, cut out where I want, then a lot of masking, because you gotta measure evenly, and that part's quite the hassle. But finished product always comes out super nice, so it's worth the efforts, right guys? I have two coats on there, I'll do one more coat, and then I can put that rear window in, just slowly chipping away. Seems like everything I start to work on, ends up taking like a day because you find something else and something else, but it'll be a good finished product to go to the track and beat up this coming year. Or no, hey, it's a new year. So yeah, beat up this year. I'm excited. 
Just got a lot of little details, so I gotta get back to it. Wanted to share with you guys where we're at. This is the fun part. Woo! Looks pretty good. I guess I gotta clean it, because it has the marks from where this stuff was sticking to, but that came out good, I'd say. I was thinking of cutting vents in it, but just looks cleaner this way, simpler. I like it. That's what I had envisioned, so it all worked out. All right, I painted the bay a little bit, touched up some areas, looking cleaner. I'm not gonna go too crazy, cause yeah, you could just make it too nice and you scrape it when you're at the track anyway. Just wanna make it look solid, but back here I gotta definitely pull some stuff out, clean the heck out of this back here, then repaint some stuff back here cause it's all faded and gross. We need to make it look all beautiful again. And I need to repaint this structure, but I just needed to kind of finalize things. I think there's one or two more things I need to make a mess back here. Then I take it apart and clean it. And then we need some radium updates for this here. Radium. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap this episode up. Next episode, see what I accomplish, see what I, you know, as the stuff all goes back together. Thanks for watching. More stuff coming your way shortly. Got a lot of stuff to do on this car. I'm gonna be here till nine o'clock every night. All right, talk to you guys soon.